Hey guys, I'm here with Peter Allen Vogt. Hey. He plays the lounge, sing lounge singer and a lot of many more characters in the yes, show. Yes, I do. You're I'm very multifaceted. The sergeant, the lounge singer, the a specialty man. character, Pete. That's the name of the guy in the bus. Oh, that's his name. He has a name. And uh, waiter, and then Big Tony. Oh, the 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 tattoo, tattoo guy. Now you're a twin, so for a those who, just so you guys know, if you did not know, he is a twin. You saw his brother in Hairspray Live, but you saw both him and his brother in Valentine's Day, yes. and so many other things. Princess Diaries. Princess Diaries, which is amazing. Don't forget nostalgia-wise, Keenan and Kill, if you're a Keenan and Kill fan, and of course I have to mention Hannah Montana because you were yeah. the uh, funniest neighbor in the history of Hannah Montana. Ah, uh, yay! I think you're the only neighbor we ever met. I, well, I think I have too. Yeah, there's no one else. Just the two houses on the street. <laughs> very Malibu. rich. We're very rich. So what is it like for you doing this show? Um, it's different because I've been doing a lot of stuff, you know, at Rockwell. You've seen me there. A lot of fun parody stuff. Um, the last time I did like a book musical was two years ago at the Actors Co-op. I did The Mystery of Edwin Drood. Oh, so yeah. to be back again doing a book musical, you gotta stick to the lines. You gotta <laughs> know your choreography. You gotta know your blocking. Can't make it up. It's fun. It brings you back to where you started from because I started doing musicals and singing and all that sort of stuff. So it's been great. And the group, honestly, has been amazing. Everybody's great. Everybody's so fun to work with. The After Hours Theater Company people are the nicest people I've ever dealt with. And I'm not just saying that because they're in the room. So was it hard for you not to improv because you have been doing a lot of Rockwell shows and Prospect Theater shows? And <laughs> was it hard like so you had to rein yourself back in a little bit? It's not hard to do it. It's just you... When you do a lot of improv, you just keep thinking like, oh, I could do it this way, I could do it that way. But when you do theater, you have to recreate the same thing over and over. And the challenge th about theater, and what I love about it is making it fresh each night. Because the audience hasn't seen it. You've been doing it 122 times. But the audience is seeing it for the first time, so you have to make it fresh. That's why I have like so much respect for people on Broadway who are doing eight shows a week. And you go see the show, and it's the same show with the same energy, the same intentions. The reactions are real and all that stuff. I mean, that's what I think book shows, real shows, that's more of a challenge to me. Improv, you can be like, oh, I'm quick and I can fix this. You can't in a real show. You have to do what's written. You have to do the way it's directed. You have to do the way you've been told to move, stand, because you have other people depending on you doing what you're supposed to do. So it's a challenge and it's great. It's fun. So do a dice and verify. Just uh, whatever. Really. My character's an army guy, so screw that. Screw Marines. That? I don't. I don't know. No, I love well, Marines. It, I love all the armed forces. Thank you for saving our lives. <laughs> he really does mean that. So one thing before we go, because the show's about beauty. What do you define as? Well, one of the no, know, one of the you know what I mean. One of the main things is beauty. So to you, for you, what is beautiful? I think this is going to sound so sappy, but I think it's it's what a person brings to the table. Anybody can look a as pretty as they want or as beautiful as they think they are or others think they are. But I think it's what you bring to the table. It's personality, it's caring, it's a sense of um, kindness to others, stuff like that. Because you could have the most beautiful person and they could be horrible to people. And you can have a person who people don't think are attractive at all and they could be the most amazing person to people. So I really think it's truly that don't judge a book by its cover. And like what I love about our show is it seems like it's kind of bashing looks and stuff, but I think there's a comeuppance and there's a story that's told. And in the end, the girl that's supposedly the ugly girl really turns out to be the beautiful swan at the end. Not just because of her looks, but emotionally she saves our lead guy and he finally gets it. I mean, it happens early in the show, but at the very end, you see her as the true hero of the story. And I think, I think it's the perfect story like fable almost because some people get upset and say it's bashing people's looks and stuff and I think it's the story that has to be told and in the end if you really pay attention to it and don't get caught up in all the craziness you see that it's basically the ugly duckling story and in the end we have a beautiful swan and Nikki Claspill, who's amazing she is well he has to go get ready because they have a show in like probably less than 10 minutes so I'm gonna let you get ready with your I have to go on stage you don't see this <laughs> you don't see that